Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at some numerical examples of the positive predicted value and the negative predicted value. So we're going to utilize the table format. Notice that we have a total of 1,000 subjects, 40 that have the disease, 960 of them that are healthy. So 4% have the disease that we're testing for. And we're going to use the same numbers as before. Let's say that the test is 98% sensitive. That means 98 out of 100 will test positive if they are indeed positive. And the test is 95% specific, which means that 95% who are negative will be tested as negative, and 5% will then be false positive. So we'll have 2% false negatives and 5% false positives. So on the vertical columns, we have what we would call the truth columns. That means we have indeed 40 that have the condition, 960 that are healthy. So we have on the horizontal axis, we have the test rows. And notice that this row tests positive, this row tests negative. If we look in the middle here, we have these four squares. We have the true positives over here and the true negatives over there, which means we have the false positives there and the false negatives here. All the, the positives mu must add up to the total positives. All the negatives must add up to the negative, uh, the total negatives. Now, if there's 40 that have the disease and they test, and notice that we have the test that is 98% sensitive, 98% of them will be caught and will be flagged as positive. 98% of 40 is 39.2. 2% will be false negatives. So 2% of the 40, 0.8, will test as negative, even though they are actually positive, but they're tested as negative. And so together they add up to the 40 that we started with. At the same time, we have 960 who are free from the condition we're testing for, but the test is only 95% specific, which means that 5% will not be testing negative. They will actually be testing positive, even though they're actually negative. 5% of 960 is 48, but 95% of those that are healthy will be tested as negative, and therefore 912 will get a negative test result. Then we add up all the positives, 87.2, all the negatives, 912.8, to add up to a total of 1,000 subjects. Now, the numerical example for the positive predicted value and the negative predicted value. The positive predicted value is all the true positives, which are of course these right here, divided by all the total positives, which is the true positives and the false positives combined to be 87.2, which means that we get a number or a percentage of 44.95, about 45%, which means that if you tested positive, there's a 45% probability that you actually have the condition. The negative predicted value is the true, the, the true negatives divided by the total negatives. Here are the true negatives, there are the total negatives. Notice they're almost the same number. So when we divide the true negatives by the total negatives, we get a number very, very, very close to 1, very close to 100%, which is exactly what we want. If you test the negative, you don't want to actually be positive. You want to actually be negative. So that means that if you test it negative, you have a 99.91% probability that you will actually be negative, which is really good. A very small uh, uh, percentage or a very small probability that you will be positive if you test a negative. That's what you want. So now let's try to feel out why the numbers are what they are. Notice, what would make this number smaller? This number would be smaller if there were more false negatives. So that means that if the sensitivity of the test drops, so that more people will be tested negative if they're actually positive, then this number will go down, which is actually a really bad thing. So you want the false negatives to be as small as possible, and that can be accomplished by having a very high sensitivity on the test. So you want the sensitivity to be as close as possible to 100%. The closer to 100%, the closer the negative predicted value will be 100%. That's exactly what you want. So it depends upon the sensitivity of the test. As the sensitivity of the test drops, you'll have more false negatives, which means you'll have a small number here, which means if you test negative, you're not 100% sure, nearly 100% sure, that you actually are negative. What controls the number here on the positive predicted values? Again, you want this number to be as big as possible, but if it's not as big as you'd like, you can run the test two or three or four times, like we saw in previous videos, to bring that number up. Of course, you don't want to just keep testing people. You want to keep it to a minimum. Notice, 
Again, for this to be as close as possible to 100, you want the denominator to be as close as possible to the numerator. In other words, you want to have as few false positives as possible. And what drives the false positives? Well, that's driven by the specificity of the test. If this becomes lower, you'll have a higher percentage of false positives. And since false positives is part of a large sample because you expect a lot of people to be free from the condition, even a relatively small percentage will make a big number relative to the true positives you'll have a lot of total positives and therefore that will drive this number down. So basically speaking, you want the specificity of the test to be as high as possible to reduce the number of false positives to bring this number up. And so now you can see how the numbers relate to one another and how you derive the positive predicted value and the negative predicted value. And that's how it's done.